Welcome to Heroic Design. I'm Christopher McLean. Today, we'll reverse engineer a clever bottle cap design. We'll learn how to create subfunctions, which are the basic building blocks for a lot of the design process. Solving an entire problem in one go is too complicated. It limits the number of options you look at, so you're less likely to find the best solution. You probably also miss important parts of the problem. They might not get included, or they might get bolted on at the last moment. So you either end up with an incomplete solution or a solution that isn't as integrated as it could be. So instead of the quick method, we're going to look at the rigorous method. Today, we're going to look at subfunctions, which are a rigorous method of breaking down a problem into its parts. Subfunctions help us generate more ideas and better ideas. They also help us integrate those ideas into more coherent solutions. And they help us with design for manufacturability and assembly, which makes our designs less expensive. All of this is good for our users, which means it's good for us as designers. To do this, we'll cover what subfunctions are and how they fit into the overall design process. Then, surprisingly, we'll do a short grammar lesson. And finally, we'll work through an example. The example is a very clever bottle cap, which we will reverse engineer into its subfunctions. In future videos, we'll carry this example forward and complete more of the design process. We always start by looking at the overall function of a design. That's the overall job the design does. Each one of your designs does a job for your user, and your user hires it to do that job. And as it does that job, it solves a problem for them. So a subfunction is just part of this overall function or job or problem you're solving. This is how we break the big problem into a bunch of smaller problems that are easier to solve. And then we use these subfunctions throughout the design process. We create them fairly early on in the process, and we use them in the functional map, which is the design of the system. Then we use them as a basis for brainstorming. And near the end of the conceptual design, we use them in the design failure modes and effects analysis, the DFEMA. In the DFEMA, they're the basis for brainstorming potential failure modes. So subfunctions are critical in the design process, and we work hard to get them correct at the beginning. But subfunctions can be tricky to compose. If we get them wrong, it can be more difficult to solve the problem. But if we're careful and we get them right, they make it much easier. As we practice creating subfunctions, we have to remember these characteristics. All of our subfunctions together must be MISI. MISI stands for Mutually Exclusive and Collectively Exhaustive. The first part, mutually exclusive, means that our subfunctions can't overlap. They must be independent from each other. The second part, collectively exhaustive, means that all together, the subfunctions must mean the same thing as the overall function. There can't be missing parts or extra parts. The subfunctions also can't contain solutions or limits. We want to be as free as possible when we're brainstorming. They also shouldn't contain any criteria. Criteria are how well the design solves the problem. We leave that for later in the process. Before we get to the example, we have a grammar lesson. A grammar lesson is slightly out of place in a design video, but this one is helpful. How we talk about design affects how we design. I always use the format verb, then noun, then prepositional phrase if required. You'll see this format whenever I talk about subfunctions. In the example, convert is the verb, electricity is the noun, and to light is the prepositional phrase. A subfunction is just a problem we're trying to solve. If we can state that problem clearly and correctly, it means we truly understand it. 
And once we understand a problem, we're well on our way to solving it. By the way, this format is also great for assigning tasks to yourself and others. For example, write memo on next steps or create slides for next video. Next time you are writing yourself a task list, try this out. It will put some action words into it, which I find is helpful. And now we're ready to dive into this example and reverse engineer the subfunctions out of it. We usually never start with the solution, but reverse engineering is a different case. As an exercise, and sometimes even in real life, it's interesting to start with a solution and work our way backward in the design process. We can do this with someone else's design or our own design. Once we get all the way back to the beginning of the design process, we can go forward through the process. But this time, we can decide if we want to do things differently. Maybe we'll find a new way of doing something. I'm going to zoom in now so we can look at this very clever bottle cap design. From this side, it looks like an average plastic bottle cap. But from this side, it looks a little different. The single band looks like it's divided up, and there's a little tab in the center there. As you unscrew it, you can see the small pieces of plastic that snap when you unscrew the cap. And now you can see two strips of plastic that join the bottom part to the top part. As you flip the cap open, this little tab becomes a cam that locks the cap in the open position. You can drink from it without the cap getting in the way, and then close it and screw it back on when you're done. Very clever. That last part is new for this type of cap. There are other caps out there that stay with their bottle, but they often have a hinge or a loop. This cap packs a lot of function into a single molded part. Whenever I see something new like this, I wonder how the design process could have been used to create something like this earlier. Maybe earlier cap designers were thinking about the function of this cap in a very narrow way. Or maybe a new problem has been introduced that didn't exist before. That could be what's happening here, as this cap is being introduced as a way to keep the cap with the bottle so they both can be recycled. Now we can work our way through the subfunctions and see if we can keep all our options open. First off, there are no right and wrong answers here. I'm very pragmatic when I create overall functions and subfunctions. It really comes down to what is useful as I'm working through the rest of the design. Often, when I get to the brainstorming phase, I'll go back and adjust the subfunctions so they're more useful. And when I'm doing a full design revision, I start by updating the functional map to my latest thinking. As I was looking at this design, I just started writing down what it does. The ceiling function is obviously the most important, but it also keeps the cap out of your way while you're drinking. And it keeps the cap with the bottle so you don't lose it and it's easier to recycle. There are also the tiny attachments that snap when you open it. They're there for a purpose. And it's amazing that it's all molded in one piece. As you study a design like this for the first time, a lot of ideas will come to you. These ideas will be a mix of functions, requirements, criteria, and solutions. In this series, I'm going to try and tease all of these apart. And again, this is important for a few reasons. The first is to clearly state the problem so you're solving the right problem, and so it's easier to solve. The second is to give yourself, as the designer, the biggest possible solution space. You don't want to unnecessarily limit yourself. So my current idea of the overall function, just for this part of the design, is seal, unseal, reseal soda for drinking. 
I'm ignoring all the details of how it's done and how well it does it, and just sticking to the function. There are actually three verbs here, seal, unseal, and reseal. I like having these three verbs because it tells you this isn't just a one-way street. We'll talk about that more when we get to the subfunctions. The noun here is soda. I'm very specific about the beverage because soda has a lot of specific characteristics. And the prepositional phrase is for drinking. This gives us context to why we are doing this in the first place. As I work through the series, I'll see if my idea of the overall function changes. If you have any other ideas of what it could be, please put them in the comments. Now we can break this down into subfunctions and see if we can keep all of our options open, not just for this particular solution, but for all the potential solutions. Let's start with one of the more obvious subfunctions, prevent leakage and contamination of soda. Regardless of the solution, this is one of the jobs it has to do. Before the soda gets to the person who's going to drink it, it has a long journey. And then it could be in the person's bag and it can't leak there. I put in contamination because we also want to prevent things from the outside world getting into the soda. When we get to requirements, we can talk about how much leakage and how much contamination is acceptable. Those numbers might be zero, but for now, we don't worry about them. The particular solution that these designers chose is a combination of the threads as well as the sealing rim on the cap and sealing surface on the bottle. The cap also prevents contamination of the drinking surfaces, which is good. This next subfunction probably wasn't in the earliest solutions for this overall problem. Maybe back then there was more trust. But now we want to know that our packaging has not been tampered with. The particular solution that these designers chose is the small threads of plastic that snap when the cap is removed. This is a nice solution because it gives you a visual, auditory, and tactile signal when they snap. That makes it a very clear signal, even for a person with vision or hearing impairment. They also help to keep the cap on, which is part of the first subfunction. So this one solution of the small threads helps us solve two problems, which is great for integration and simplification. And it can all be molded as one piece, which is great for design for manufacturability and design for assembly. This last subfunction is an interesting one. My first thoughts were around preventing the loss and contamination of the cap, which is exactly what this clever attachment mechanism does. But I decided that wasn't the best choice. First, it states a solution. That there is a cap is a solution. I can think of three solutions that don't use a cap. The first is a cork. The second is a metal bottle cap. The third is the solution used by a Ramune soda bottle. It actually seals with a marble and you use a piece of the lid to push the marble into the bottle so you can drink. However, you can't reseal it. There's a lot of history with that bottle. It's beautiful, it's unique, it's fun to use, so they have a successful product. But a Ramune soda bottle is typically a small volume, and in Japan you don't walk around drinking soda. So you don't really need to reseal the bottle. In North America and Europe, people have decided that having an unsealed soda is a problem. So resealing a soda has become, for the most part, a necessary problem to solve. Probably because we carry around larger volumes of soda. So I think reseal soda is a good third subfunction. For this product, it's a job that has to be done. We could use different solutions for subfunctions one and three, but this plastic bottle cap uses the same solution for both. So, those are the three subfunctions. Prevent leakage and contamination of soda, indicate soda hasn't been tampered with, and reseal soda. And this very neat solution keeps the cap with the bottle for recycling, but out of your way while you're drinking.
but that part is nowhere in the subfunctions. In future videos, when we get into requirements and criteria, we'll see how describing what a good solution is for this user leads us to this particular solution. Thank you for your time and attention. I'll see you soon.